good morning and Merry Christmas a few few weeks early, but we can do that this month, can't we? And uh, just celebrate. We're celebrating. And um, this morning we are going to be looking at Luke 2, 8 through 20. If you want to turn in your Bible, I'm going to go ahead and pray and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can gather together online. And um, if we're maybe home, um, avoiding COVID, avoiding the flu, whatever, um, or maybe we're sick um, and can't join in person, whatever the reason may be, I just ask that you just be whoever is watching and that you would touch their hearts with your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so uh, when I was growing up, I lived seven miles out of town outside of Dallas, Oregon, and I rode the bus, and I remember it would be so cold, and um, I was the first one to get on the bus, and later on my sister joined me, and, and it was just really, really early, but one of the stops that we made, one of the passengers that we picked up was a classmate of mine, and um, his parents had sheep. They had a lot of sheep. And every, uh, every spring, it was lambing season. And I loved it because there were all these lambs, um, tiny little helpless, cute little lambs. And every time I would see them, I would think about the lambs in the Bible that were sacrifices for sin. And we're going to look a little bit at that, but I just always thought of those lambs and how cute and, and yet how helpless they were. So let's look at Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. And it says, And to the same region there were some shepherds, staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly afraid. You think about um, uh, peanuts and, um, and the Christmas story that is written in... in um, in Charlie Brown's Christmas and and that recitation and they were sorely afraid. All right, back to uh, verse 10. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men for whom he is pleased. And it came about when the angel had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds began saying to one another, let, the, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in haste and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this Christ. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were, were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart, and the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. All right, the shepherds, the shepherds, they were out in a field. Can you imagine? You are out in a field. It's it's probably a little bit chilly, um, you might have a fire going um, so that you could see and make sure that your sheep were okay. Um, some of you might be sleeping. Some of you might be, you know, taking watch. But the angels appear to them. How incredible. And we, we 
we think about how incredible that might be to a shepherd in and of itself. But I want to talk about shepherds for a moment. And I want you to see how even more incredible this was and, and make a correlation here. First of all, and you might already know this, but shepherds were the lowliest of the low. They were the low, uh, low man on the totem pole in society. You know, they weren't illegal, but they were just one notch above them. Um, they were considered to be dirty and stinky. They slept with their animals. And, um, you know, showers were probably not something that they took. Um, baths um, were not something that they got that often. Their clothes probably um, didn't smell real great. And um, they just weren't accepted by society. And, um, and it was difficult to work your way out of being a shepherd. The shepherds were, um, were hired hands or you were the son of the owner. So um, being a shepherd, um, it was just really hard to work your way out of that. Now, the tools of a shepherd were also important. They had a club, and, in the, and that club was used to fight off wild animals. They were pr the protector of their sheep, of their flock, and that club was used to fight off wild animals. They didn't have guns, so they couldn't um, get rid of uh, or, or protect their animals in that way. They had to physically fight the animals with the club. And, um, and, and kill a wild animal in that, in that way. Um, it was a difficult and dangerous job. The other um, significant tool that a shepherd had was a staff. And that staff had a crook on the end of it. And it was for, um, you, they used that staff to uh, put that crook around the head of the animal or maybe even around the leg. If the animal got itself caught up in some briars or um, some bushes and the shepherd um, couldn't get into the bushes to pull the animal out, to pull that sheep out, um, they would use that staff to reach in and hook onto them and pull them back. And it might be that um, that the lamb or the or the sheep had fallen over a cliff and was hung up where where the shepherd could retrieve them or save them with that staff and pull them to safety. And then we have lambs, the lambs that the shepherds took care of. And lambs were important because lambs, the, the birth of the lambs, ensured the ongoing wealth of the owner. It ensured that, that their flock would grow. And, um, and, and this, uh, this event that took place in Bethlehem, the lambs of Bethlehem were very important because Bethlehem was only about, and is, it's still there, um, it was only about five miles south of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was the place where lambs were sacrificed. And for um, Passover alone, they needed many, many, many perfect lambs, unblemished lambs. And um, those lambs probably, now we don't know for sure, um, probably came from Bethlehem. And it is estimated during Jesus's time that um, the number of perfect unblemished lambs was 2,500. That's a lot of lambs. And legend has it, 
Now, I want to stress this, that this is legend or tradition. We don't have this in writing um, during the time of Jesus. It doesn't show up until um, about 160 years later. Um, so I want to stress that this is not found in the biblical record. However, one of the things that they did according to tradition, when an unblemished lamb was born, the shepherd would wrap that lamb in swaddling cloths, the same type of thing that they wrapped newborn babies in. They would wrap those unblemished lambs in swaddling cloths so they didn't get injured. And then they would lay them in the feeding trough or the manger. And in that way, they could set them aside while they were helping with the other births or the other lambing that was going on. And then they would come back and um, they would unwrap that lamb to make sure that it was unblemished and set it aside for the sacrifices in the temple in Jerusalem. Do you see the correlation there? Like I've said, that is tradition. That is not something that we find in the biblical record. But it makes sense. It makes sense that it would come from Bethlehem because it was so close. There is also a tower there that um, is referred to in, um, in the book of Micah in the Old Testament about keeping watch from the tower, the lambs of Bethlehem. And we see that the lambs were slaughtered for the forgiveness of sin. Their blood was used to atone for the sins of the people. Now, we've looked at shepherds. We've looked at lambs. Let's look at Jesus. In Psalm 23, David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You see, the Lord... Jesus, Jesus the Messiah, is our shepherd. He is the great shepherd. He watches over us. He protects us. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't um, need to eat. He is constantly watching us. And he was referred to in John 1.29, where it is said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, Jesus was not only the Lamb, he's also the shepherd. He was both. And we see him being born as a Lamb and rising as our shepherd. Christmas is important in our celebrating that shepherd part of Jesus and that lamb part of Jesus. Because of him, we have forgiveness. Because of him, we have a great shepherd. And throughout the Bible, we are considered sheep. Sheep aren't very smart, and we're not very smart, are we? Well, we think we are. We think we are, but boy, we can be pretty dumb. We can be pretty dumb. And um, I know in my lifetime, I have done things and it doesn't matter my age. I'm a sheep. I am a sheep. I do dumb things. And I look back and I think I was, so, I thought I was so smart, but I was being dumb. And I have a shepherd who helps me, who takes me with that crook of that staff by my neck and says, mm, come this way, you're off the track here. Let me, let me help you. And, and he does that for me. And this week, I want you to think about Jesus being the shepherd and the lamb. Is he the lamb for you that sacrificed his blood to forgive your sins? And is he being the shepherd in your life? Is he guiding you? Are you looking to him 
for which way to go in your life? Do you have decisions that you need to make that uh, uh, might be little decisions, but it might be a big decision. And even those little decisions, little decisions add up to bigger decisions um, to have uh, a cumulative effect in our life. And we have to make um, those decisions. We have to have a shepherd. Otherwise, we will make too many bad decisions in our life. We need a shepherd. We were created by God at the foundation of the world to need a shepherd. We don't have the ability within ourselves to do it by ourselves. We just don't. We think we do, but we don't. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is the way we were created. We need that great shepherd. Do you know him today? If you don't, it is so easy because he sacrificed his life coming like a lamb to bring us forgiveness. And all we have to do is accept it. It isn't something that we can do um, to buy it. It isn't something that we earn. We just accept it. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I have sinned, I have done wrong, and I am sorry. Please forgive me. I accept your forgiveness of my sins and help me to follow you, the great shepherd. Be the shepherd of my life. And he'll do that in an instant, and it's free, absolutely free. And then let us know. We would love to help you to learn how to hear his voice and um, and how to follow him. Will you do that this morning? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that Jesus came to be the lamb, to make that sacrifice for our sins, to make that payment that we could never, ever do ourselves. And I thank you that he is the shepherd, the shepherd that leads us, the shepherd that guides us. And I thank you for that. And Lord, if there's anybody listening that has not done that in their lives today, I pray that they will do that right now and that they will follow you. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. If you would like to give to the ministries of the church, um, we would appreciate that so much. You just go to SherwoodNewLife.org and also hit the like and subscribe button. That helps us out. And if you have a prayer request, you can do that on our website also. Have a great week and we will see you next week.